Not gonna lie, when I first read about this in the news yesterday, my first thought was, you have got to be kidding me, another one? So let's get straight into it. Let's talk the US's newest funeral home scandal. In September 2017, John Halford, his fourth wife, Carrie Halford, and Jack Dewey opened Return to Nature Funeral Home in Colorado Springs, the city's first green burial funeral home. For reference, because I did have to Google where this was myself, Colorado is located here, almost smack bang in the middle of the US, and Colorado Springs is about an hour's drive south of Denver, the state capital, which looks lovely by the way. So they marketed the home as a place where customers can receive all the services of a traditional funeral home except embalming and the bodies that weren't cremated were taken to either of the city-owned Evergreen or Fairview cemeteries, which all have areas for natural burial. The business has moved six times since 2017 and currently resides in Penrose, which is 34 miles or 54 kilometers from Colorado Springs. Now, I went on their website, which quite frankly, I was surprised was still active, all things considered, but it states that it's been serving families for over 80 years which has been discredited by multiple journalists pulling up their licenses and the like and tracking the dates back. But lying, as you will see, is a theme for these people. But before that, let's get into the details of just what has been discovered to create such a fuss that even I managed to hear about it across the pond. What happened in Colorado? So last week, neighbors reported to the police a foul smell coming from the Return to Nature building, reporting that this smell had been in the air for about a month at this point, but had suddenly gotten worse. And a neighbor behind the property noticed that this increase in smell occurred after a window had broken at the back of the property. Police rocked up with a search warrant and discovered 115 improperly stored bodies within the modest 2,500 square foot building. Under Colorado state law, any body not buried within 24 hours must be properly refrigerated. You would think that would also be common sense. Soon after this discovery, ambulance crew, the coroner and military personnel attended the site. Police reports, which I've linked in the description, state that John Halford acknowledged that he had a problem on the property, but did not elaborate as to what he considered the problem to be. The report also states that Halford said that he practiced taxidermy on the property, which was also not elaborated on, nor were there any reports of animal bodies on the property. It would have seen that Halford also attempted to conceal the improper storage of human remains. That's a quote. At one point, he did attempt to not allow investigators in, so I can only assume that's what that quote means, because I'm not sure how you attempt to conceal 115 decaying bodies otherwise. There are questions about just how long this business had been located at this address. As you can see in the pictures, it's quite a rundown building with weeds everywhere. Google Maps shows it to be in quite an industrial area, but neighbors report that they never saw anyone coming or going from the building. And the hearse and the SUV that you see in the picture only appeared in June this year, so barely five months ago. Which is concerning considering documentation released by the Colorado Department of Regulatory Agencies says Return to Nature Funeral Home had been operating as an unregistered funeral home since their license expired nearly a year ago. But here's something interesting. Every state in the US except Colorado requires a minimum level of education and training in order to be licensed to run a funeral home. Now I couldn't find any information on why Colorado was the exception, though many have speculated that after this they will be cracking down. John Halford did receive an apprentice license to practice from the Oklahoma Funeral Board, but that expired back in 2004. Only last year did Colorado tighten up its oversight on funeral homes, allowing state regulators to inspect facilities after they receive complaints, or if they suspect a violation of state law. And that blows my little noodle that that wasn't always the case. This came after former funeral home owner Megan Hess of Sunset Mesa Funeral Home in Colorado was sentenced to 20 years for stealing the bodies and body parts of hundreds of people and selling them to body broker services. This was one of the cases that we mentioned in our modern day corpse theft video. I suppose to put this in a bit of context, John Halford, the particular owner whose name keeps coming up, has a long history of legal and financial issues. These include owing and not paying property tax, three unnamed civil lawsuits, which led to him having to pay up big bucks, 
multiple failures to turn up to court, a misdemeanor charge for pointing a deadly weapon in an apparent prank gone wrong, and running an unlicensed funeral home in Oklahoma in 2010. So I guess smart decision making just isn't his strong suit. My questions. Okay, this is just my immediate musings on the situation because the news has only been out for about a week. Obviously, it's horrific and a horrific breach of trust towards their clients. That should go without saying. It should never have happened, which leads us to ask why. Now, as we said earlier, Colorado is different than other states in the country as it has quite lax laws on its funeral industry. But I'm wondering how they got 115 bodies into a building that's quite visible within five months and no one saw anything. Did they move the bodies in the middle of the night? And if so, why? What purpose does that serve? Why did this particular company move buildings six times in six years? That's suspicious as hell. Their website is not transparent at all and far too basic for a funeral home. It spends most of its words just talking up natural burial in general and not really saying much about their actual services. Now, since this all only came to light this week, there hasn't been much time for police to investigate and have answers. These things take time. So hopefully in the coming months, we will hear more about why this particular situation happened. But what I find particularly concerning for the US population and its funeral industry is just how often these big funeral home scandals happen over there. Now, obviously it's not that they're common in the sense that it's not happening on an annual basis or anything, but certainly enough to suggest that there may be a flaw in the system somewhere. Let me refresh your memories. In LA in 1982, there was the discovery of over 16,000 aborted fetuses being improperly stored at Malvin Weisberg's Californian home. For some reason, no criminal charges were filed against him because apparently he had stored the specimens properly but had not disposed of them due to financial difficulties. California, 1988, Coastal Cremations Inc. was found to have been cremating bodies en masse with multiple bodies being cremated together after their gold teeth had been removed and sold along with any body parts that could also be sold to make money. The cremated remains would then be dumped out the back in a pile and family would unknowingly receive a scoop out of that random pile. In Florida in 1998, the Morning Glory funeral home scandal took place at a Howe Morning Glory Chapel and it involved improper disposal and burial of bodies by the funeral home's owner. Investigation eventually revealed bodies stacked in the funeral home without preservation or refrigeration and multiple bodies buried inside single caskets. In Georgia 2002, the tri-state crematorium scandal revealed a crematorium where 340 bodies were discovered to have never been cremated, but instead dumped at several locations in and around the crematorium site. Michigan 2018, the bodies of 63 fetuses or infants were discovered around Perry Funeral Home Building in boxes. They were closed down by the state. Also in Michigan 2018, Detroit funeral home Cantrell Funerals was discovered to have hundreds of cremated remains and molding bodies lying around the building, including the bodies of 11 infants stuffed in the ceiling. South Carolina 2018, this was a particularly bad year. Family First Funeral Homes was found to have multiple bodies rotting in refrigerators that weren't turned on and should have been cremated. Colorado 2020, Sunset Mesa Funeral Homes found to have illegally been harvesting parts from bodies meant to be cremated and selling parts to body brokers. The owner is now serving 20 years in jail. New York 2022, an unnamed funeral home was found to be running without a funeral director license or a funeral home license and contained multiple severely decomposed bodies. Owner Brian Bartlett has turned himself into police. And this doesn't include the scandals related to cemeteries, funeral training providers, funeral insurance companies, and the majority of funeral homes that have been caught out linked to the illegal body trade. But why do we keep seeing these kind of scandals happening? On one hand, I think something is obviously very flawed in the system, especially when you don't see it happening in so many other countries. But on the other hand, they are one of the largest countries. So they have a much larger population than most, which requires more funeral homes to exist. So statistically, I suppose they would have more funeral scandals than the rest of us. And we hear about them because it's an English speaking country. Maybe China or somewhere else has massive funeral home scandals all the time as well. And we just don't hear about them. I don't know. But multiple funeral homes being caught out with massive amounts of misused bodies would imply from any angle that something is not right in the US funeral industry. 
Why wasn't it handled the first time around by authorities, lawmakers, funeral associations, someone? Or even why hasn't the funeral industry lobbied for tighter laws? Because every time this kind of stuff makes headlines, that's a massive reputation hit to the industry. The rest of the industry consists of decent, hardworking, dedicated funeral staff who shouldn't be shamed or put in the same category as these criminals. But that's kind of how media attention works. With that said, I've been interested in finding the root cause of all this for a while now, and this case has just spurred me on further. So when I manage to get to the bottom of it, I will certainly be sharing it with all of you. I would like to know all of your thoughts on all of this. Like I said, the news of this case has only just broken this week, so we don't know much about it yet, and hopefully we will soon. And hopefully they will make an arrest soon as well, because that hasn't been done yet either. And while this is horrific, please don't tarnish all funeral workers with the same brush. The vast majority are good eggs and deserve your support. Let us know what you think about all this in the comments. And with that, go talk death.